Pacific River snakes its way through Papua New Guinea, pouring life into the landscape. It's the main artery of one of the most pristine freshwater basins on the planet. The river, the lake and the forest, they're all connected. It's the lifeblood of the people. There's wildlife here you won't find anywhere else on Earth. Rainforests as far as the eye can see. And 50,000 years of living culture. Some call it the second Amazon. But like the Amazon, the sea peak has become a battleground. <laughs> PNG is the world's largest exporter of tropical round logs. In the CPIC, it's big business. So what do you see when you walk around these logs? I see a lot of money. And the plan for a huge mine and hydroelectric dam is dividing CPIC people from the mountains to the sea. That little cap there, that's where they're going to pull that dam. Put it in the market and then run back this way. People here want development, but they also want to protect the environment that sustains them and their culture. Can they trust the logging companies, the miners or the government? There's a battle shaping up on these waters. <laughs> I'm waiting for a plane that will take us deep into the jungle. When I started as the correspondent here, I heard stories of conflict in the far reaches of the sea peak. A controversial mine proposal, claims of a logging land grab, police brutality, even killings. But people didn't want to go on record. Since then, my colleague Tekla and I have tried to get first-hand accounts, but it's tough. Communications upriver are patchy at best. Now, we've finally got a way in. We've made contact with a local landowner called Luke Amiel. He's encouraged us to come and see for ourselves. We're not sure what to expect. All we've got is Luke's phone number and a mark on the map for the Edwaki airstrip. Looks like we've got a welcome party. The last plane that landed here was months ago. <laughs> Morning, chill, get up. <laughs> Morning. There's no sign of Luke, but these people are going to take us to him. Look, come look, please, Blue. You're yeah. excited. <laughs> Thank you, Chu. Hi, Get burnt. I'm not built for PNG sun. <laughs> it's about an hour and a half's walk from the airstrip to the banks of the Yellow River, where we're told we'll continue our journey by canoe. You really do feel cut off out here. This is one of the most underdeveloped parts of Papua New Guinea. Uh, there are no roads in or out. Uh, communications are very minimal. Services are all but non-existent. It is uh, incredibly isolated. And you get the sense that if you wanted to get away with something out here, you probably could.
This is the heart of the Upper Sepik Basin, an untamed wilderness of marshlands, waterways and hundreds of species of trees. But it's giants like these that are most prized by the loggers. We're on the Yellow River, which is one of the tributaries that feeds into the mighty Sepik. It's also the western boundary of a massive and controversial logging area. Around a bend in the river, we find Luke. Hey, Luke! <laughs> For over 10 years, Luke's been a thorn in the side of the logging operations here. Luke, Lumi Natalie, good you. He says he never gave consent for logging, and he wants it to stop. Luke claims the company brings police here, and he says they intimidate landowners who oppose the logging. Oh. Me no like logging. Logging activities are more environments. Company in a policy abuse him. You mean rights to plan a welfare plan? Luke's gone to the authorities and his local MP, but he says they're not listening. Now he's rallied landowners for a meeting with a law firm from Port Moresby, hoping their claims will finally be heard. Crown to you. All you got machine you come inside. Now, yeah, I'm more ripping you to so you go out the country floor. Skin peak or cutting, I give you. Meet the hapus and all keke. You want to be Kali? The landowners have gathered here at Yellow River High School. Some have walked for five days. Was me blow by the Chayani, Tingima. Now, all is the line. How will you come to you mean or it'll be me? You make and try all the pressure. Environmental lawyer Arthur Dalier and his team travelled two days by road and river to be here. Luke's complaint convinced them to come. They're here to see who else will step forward. Me like you must pay the one the big plan, lol. Thank you, Trulo Luke. You want them all boys to be on the ground? People are facilitating this land. People are coming said, safe, now come out of place. Thank you. Arthur works for CELCOR, the Centre for Environmental Law and Community Rights, an NGO that represents traditional landowners. People are identifying all potential plaintiffs. If it means by me, we'll court now this again. People are saying, son up now, talk, 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 this land. People are saying, I'm all right, I'm all right, huh? Yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. Can I say, meet me on the LG chairman? Now, me know it. Me have never been going to sign the LG blue minor. And that's the man going to. Monkey Marsh, I'm going to sign him to agree with me. So, 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 Policeman come to the man at him, no one by evidence. Through the blast station approaching him, stop finish. Why not sign policeman in make him? So many years ago finish. Midnight change is a big bag of pain finish. Now all this time. Close the command. Come on, you're not stop more. So come on, stop yet. Me talk here. All my gloom is a little cell of you. Me wait stop. By the other camp of fire. You blood him clear? Camp of fire. So was come on, it's a camp of fire. And now she talk about this. I got me back around the court. Trouble here goes back more than a decade to when the Malaysian logging company Global Elite was granted access to more than 100,000 hectares of customary land. The company told us it obtained legal consent. 
The type of lease it was given, called an SABL, is not a logging lease. Cutting down trees is only allowed to clear the land for agriculture. The company says it had plans for rubber and palm oil, but they went up in smoke when landowners burnt down the nurseries. What we've been seeing is most logging companies are using that SABL under the Land Act to conduct logging operations. And it's for a period of 99 years. I imagine that's uh, about three generations. And landowners, they will become spectators in their own land for 99 years. To get the SABL, the company had to detail how their project would benefit the area. They committed to improve health services and schools and build new roads. But locals say they haven't seen that here at Yellow River. Since 10 years now. Ten years in operation, Mr. Tell them to ground when we must come down again on me, Blaine. Now, look, you go launch him, Lobby's play, Bla. Amy Bianni, maybe in a warring blooming blood, Papa Grandma Magrand was a place that I'm carrying. Every now we see him not in him when I go. M. Cry, Blooming Bla. Who said through the Russia, I were a blooming blana. Yes, right. M. M. Russell, thank you. This is clearly a very unhappy community. There's been a lot of emotion on show in this meeting, a lot of anger, a lot of upset. There's been allegations of people not getting what they believe they're owed. There's also been a lot of allegations about police working for logging companies and abusing landowners. Luke has his own story of police violence. Um, because all been open fire and a bullet to see more community now. Same plan. Market. Market. Yeah. Yeah. Market. Yeah. Market. Yeah. Market. Market. Yeah. Landowner Narox Nanaro tells us a policeman brought in from Port Moresby shot into the crowd during an argument. No one I'm seeing straight clear. I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah. Of the type of. Second man, I'm seeing there. I'm seeing there. I'm paralyzed in criminal laws. Third man, I'm seeing there. I'm looking in. The crowd retaliated and killed the policeman. It was Narox's brother-in-law who was shot dead, a father of four young children. We've confirmed that Global Elite has been bringing officers in and paying for their food and accommodation. The company says it has an arrangement with PNG police and it denies they're intimidating landowners. But we've been able to get a hold of the police commissioner and he tells us he's banned deployments that support logging operations. He says the officer involved in the shooting should never have been here and he wants anyone with a complaint to come to him. We've also seen a confidential report from PNG Defence that backs up claims of police using a shipping container as a jail cell and that warns logging companies are, quote, using police to bulldoze over the rights of landowners. Imagine police doing that to the people who they are supposed to protect. Instead, they are protecting foreign interest abusing or violating the people's rights, constitutional right. That's how these people have been treated by the police force, their own police. You. 
Armed with what they've heard from the meeting, Arthur and his team press on with the mission. They want to see some active logging. So do we. We're heading downstream to meet with a landowner called David Vanamo. Although no one at the meeting spoke up for the company, there are people who've consented to the logging and are benefiting from it. David is one of them. He's invited Arthur to see the operation. The company says it has the proper landowner consents, but Arthur is investigating to see if they're following the rules. Land is communally owned. It's not owned by just one single person. So consent basically has to come from everyone. And the company is doing the total opposite by just getting individual consent forms from the people and that's how they go in and cut trees. So, okay, 40,247. This is the log number 40,247. So, so this is yeah. more than 4,000 logs cut? More than 40,000 logs cut from this FCA already. So this fellow DY, Emmy, belong Low place below you. Like Simpini's money name, no. The way I must tell him the company now. David says Global Elite pays him 150 kina a fortnight, about 60 Australian dollars. We got two plus Mary. Ma, we got eight plus Pit Nini. The skill fee, I'm all not plus three plus, I'm all 150, la one one Pit Nini. People and now you missed up a lot of the system. Now you missed a lot of money. <laughs> we say goodbye to David and continue downstream. So we're just coming up to the Seapik River. This is where the two rivers join. The engine cuts out and suddenly I'm struck by the serenity of the river and how lucky we are to be here. Then the motor kicks back in and we're on our way again. We're going to Global Elite's port at Elamuli, where the logs from Yellow River are loaded onto the barges and transported down the sea peak. It's the last stop on Arthur's journey. This is, this is the log one. This is Elamuli. These logs will be sent overseas, mostly to China, where they'll be milled into things like floorboards. So what do you see when you walk around these logs? I see a lot of money. But uh, I've been to the villages where these logs come from to see things like that. I am sad and I feel for them, so I will try as much as possible and meet um, my team and the organisation. We will see how we can assist them in our capacity. People are missing out. It's time to leave Arthur and take to the skies. We're in safe hands. I've flown with the pilot, Jan, before. 
The chopper is the only way we can get to our next stop, Armour, in the mountains on the other side of the river. Global Elite and one of its partner companies have logged here too. But in the last few years, they've come up against one of the most powerful men in the Sea Peak. Mr Wapunai. Recently re-elected MP, Johnson Wapunai. After winning another term, Mr Wapunai is back in the community that raised him, spruiking his credentials as the man who stands up to the loggers. Somebody needs to tell us what they need to invest after they harvest the log. That has never happened, so I said, I wouldn't allow you to go move beyond where, where, you, where you started. So that's what happened. So they're going to go beyond. I've been elected the second time and I'm still in power for the next five years. They wouldn't push me over. In the afterglow of re-election, Mr Wapanai is riding high. But there's pressure on him to deliver. His electorate is huge, stretching over a million hectares from Arma to the top of the Frida River, one of the Seapik's major tributaries. It's the proposed site for a giant golden copper mine and hydroelectric dam called the Frida River Project. The little captain, that's where they're going to pull the dam camp. In this market, and then flood back this way. Welcome to the uh, airstrip, guys. Above these houses is a towering escarpment. That's where the dam is planned, designed to store over a billion tonnes of mine waste. That means a wall of concrete from that cliff to the mountain opposite. This area is vulnerable to earthquakes and people against the project say a dam break would be catastrophic. But the developer is assuring people that Hello. keeping them safe is their top priority. Australian-based, Chinese-owned Pernost says it's a nation-building opportunity worth $11 billion with royalties and benefits for local landowners. Majority in the area, they want to develop a place. They want a mind to come in so that they, they at least can get the spin-offs and do what they want to do. For me, I am more on neutral ground. In the shadow of the proposed dam wall is the community of Porpe. The landowners here are known as the Payamo. <laughs> Pastor Jacob. Hey. Hello. Hello. We meet elders Pastor Jacob and Rhonda Ayapani. Their father signed the original exploration permit back in 1964 that uncovered vast reserves of gold and copper. Now the application to start mining is in play. They want to make sure they get their share. Brita man must go hate. You will want better. Brita man must go hate. People something the government Pacific must look up law. See that in Payamo tribe. I'm heavy. I'm heavy. People are making pink up for you. You must not want to pay a more to give me a There's been disagreement over who the primary landowners are, and the Payamo are calling on Johnson Wapanai to make sure they're properly recognised. No, me talking to Johnson. Me put a. Me put a puskanaka line. I mean, I must do. I am talking to you, I can I can't do it. 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 I can
Papua New Guinea memang lebih belakang dari ini lebih belakang mas. Main ya, main atau kori ni main nanti. Mimpi lah start lagi ya, dah selesai. Fira main ya, mukam start tim ya. Ibu anak belakang mabit pelan pelan mari. Nau pikir ni belum belakang mari. Nau kari pikir ni nau mimpi lagi awal tempoh na. Nami kat twenty. Twenty five belas tahun puna, na mista. Mimpi lah lukis semain mas kama puna. Mimpi lah mas lukis puna people yang peradai. Tetapi main ni kami sedar mas kawa borsem, all white man ye to kain orsem, ini by stop. Because what by make him. Or by making a good okim house, good house, good passing, good something. But you live here, long and was was. Or you walk about. But you be still a son of son of rock. Carablo car, son of rock, pass the past of kitchen like a finish. Because so in round round, that's what you go, you come now, I see it. And kind of things that kind of them come up. Time you on top, low Pacific water. Time me run until Pacific me clear my Mama blow me straight. I'm look out to me. Now give me kai kai. Give me water so me can drink that water. Me na pain is sick. Everything comes from the river. Yeah. I'm on the middle Pacific, about 200 kilometers downstream from Pope, with a crocodile and local elder Matilda Pinga. She worries what could happen if the Frida River project goes ahead. Oh, but the waste plan and but silly mob ground and ball level. And nobody's like I'm ground, but I'm done a blocking garden. Or something but die. Clans from the area are gathering at Korogu village for a celebration of the traditional food and culture of the area. Korogu traditional owner and activist Emmanuel Penny leads an NGO that campaigns against the Frida River project. I'm legally request us on Mibla Talk. Mibla like an independent body, but what about one to Yubla, Nibla go law? Village to village, community to community, Nibla walk in FP Ken. PNG has a terrible history of environmental destruction from mining projects. And Emmanuel says that means there's a real lack of trust. People there, uh, of course, want to see development. But what these people forget is that all the rubbish and all the pollution, all the destruction would be carried by the people along the Sipic River. Time is not losing. Time is a bar of company. I'm just saying, 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 I'm because we understand sustainable development from our Papua New Guinean uh, heritage. Look at this, this is sustainable development. We've been able to thrive, we've been able to live, we've been able to sing and dance and be happy and be content with life and still have all of this. We have been doing this for more than 50,000 years. Oh, 